We're glad you're here tonight, and we're going to be talking to you a little bit more about the model prayer. And our text is going to be Matthew chapter 6, verse 13. We're going to put that on the board. And, and BJ, when you get up there, this is a little bit strong probably, so you can bring it down a little bit because I'll probably get a little bit louder at some point. Amen. Y'all happy to be here at church tonight? And that was excellent worship time, huh? The singing was good. These guys did, man, was that good or what? Amen. I mean, the, uh, the energy and, and uh, well, that hymn, that is something. That's an old, old hymn. We like to do the hymns. We like to do the new stuff, too. We just like to sing. We like to sing praise to God. Let me ask you something. How's your prayers? How's your prayers going? How's your prayer life? When you get done with your prayer, how do you end? Amen. <laughs> That's good. Is there anything before that sort of like thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever? I never thought about this until I prepared this message, but what an encouraging thing that we can do if we just think about those thoughts at the end. Whatever we're praying about, we've got problems. Anybody got problems tonight? Thine is the kingdom. Thine is the power. And how long? Forever. So, guys, every problem we have right now is temporary. Every solution we have is permanent. So do you like hanging out with your problems? If you don't like hanging out with your problems, start praying for the permanent solution. Thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Let's say it together, all right? We'll put that on the board if we would. It says this, For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Last week we talked to you about his kingdom, that his kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. It's not temporary. It's not going to be here a few days and be gone. It's going to last forever. We'll talk to you a little bit about that on the introduction tonight. But the message tonight is on his power. And this message is for anyone who feels weak. This message is for anyone who feels like they don't know if they can go another day. This message is for anyone who is struggling with power that seems to be far greater than they can handle. This message is for people who are discouraged, for people who feel defeated. This message is for people who have dependencies that they can't seem to overcome. This message is for people like us. Amen? And if you want to overcome your issues, you can either try it in your weak power and fail, or you can do this God's way and succeed. Because His is the power forever. Amen? And a hundred years from now, His power is still there. 1,000 years from now, his power is still there. So it just makes sense to me that we get this right now, all right? So as I asked you about your prayer life, let's start including doxologies on the end of our prayers, okay? Father, we come before you. Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we have forgiven those who are our debtors. Amen. We forgive those who have trespassed against us. Lead us not in temptation. Give us this day our daily bread. All right. Deliver us from evil. And when we're through praying, yours is the kingdom. Yours is the power. Yours is the glory. What that does is it gives me hope to go on from that prayer time to exact that power into my life. Ladies and gentlemen, we are not people who are praying to something in the sky that maybe hears us. No, our God hears our prayers, and he is active in our life. Amen. So this is what we want to do tonight. We want to start doing these hymns of praise in our prayer time. Let me give you some introduction as we talk about the two things in this doxology. First, we talked to you about kingdom last week. Kingdom is the Greek word basileia, and it simply means, um, you know, the dominion of rule or authority. Let me give you a couple of definitions tonight. The first one, this is in your notes. The kingdom of God is the rule of God over my life. 
The kingdom of God is the rule of God over my life. Now, let me tell you something. If you are a proud person, if you're a person that thinks you're going to do it in your own power, if you're a person that doesn't like to submit to authority, uh, you're going to have problems with the kingdom of God. You see, sometimes people tend to think that the kingdom of God is something just good for me and it's all about me, but the opposite is actually true. It's all about Him. It's about His glory. It's about what He wants. It's about Jesus is Lord. And if I say Jesus is Lord, that means He rules over my life. Amen? That means there's some cases I might say, God, there's another action that I want to take. But you know what, God, if you're Lord, I'm going to have to do it your way. Somebody say amen right there. Not only is it the rule of God over my life, but the kingdom of God is the rule of God over all life. I want you to think about that. His kingdom is way above everything else that we know about. Does it look like right now that the world is completely out of control? Does it? It's not out of control as far as God's concerned. Everything that happened today, God already knew about it. Amen? God knows about it. His kingdom is the rule of God over all life. Now, we can't really see the king. He hasn't set up his throne physically yet, but he is on the throne. And his kingdom right now takes precedent over everything else in the world. One day, all these other kingdoms are going to bow down and confess Jesus as Lord. That is coming. This kingdom is the everlasting kingdom. It's not going to go away. So what do we do tonight? We confess that his kingdom is forever. Let's confess it together. His kingdom is forever. That word forever is going to be important in what I'm trying to say today. The next thing that he talked about was power. Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the power. Now the word power is the Greek word dunamis. Dunamis. We've seen that a lot. If you've heard us preach very long, right Dave? We like to talk about dunamis because it sounds like dynamite. Amen? And it really has that type of idea. The idea that the Word of God is powerful. God is not limited in His power. His power is almighty. The Bible calls Him almighty. The word dunamis means strength or power or ability. And it even means power residing in a thing by virtue of its nature. One of the things about God is, in his nature, he is omnipotent. That means he's all-powerful. That means there's not any limitations on God Almighty. Many times in our humanness, we say, well, there's a situation so desperate and difficult that God himself cannot solve it. Ladies and gentlemen, that scenario does not exist. The only reason why somebody would live in that scenario is if they lacked faith in God and chose not to believe him. There are a lot of people that say they're Christian but don't live under the power of, of Almighty God because they don't submit to His power. But ladies and gentlemen, there is forever power in God Almighty. You know, I was thinking about this. Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the power. Without the power, there is no kingdom. Does that make sense? If there's no power to make it last, then there can be no kingdom. God's kingdom is real. God's kingdom is over all and is upheld by his power. His kingdom is ruled by his power. I want to put a scripture up here for you. This is from Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 3. Speaking of Jesus, and if you want to fact check me on that, go back and look at Hebrews chapter 1, but the writer of Hebrews is talking about Jesus, the Son of God, it says that he is the radiance of his God's glory and the exact representation of his nature. And he makes an astounding statement. And upholds all things by the word of his power. Jesus upholds all things by the word of his power. His power is what makes all of life work. His kingdom is ruled by his power. So tonight, as we preach the message, his power. We together confess that his power is forever. Can you say that with me? His power is forever. So we finish our prayers. Thine is the kingdom. Yours is the power. And then next week, yours is the glory forever. 
Praise God, guys. This is who we are. We don't live in a finite reality where our faith is going to fail us. We live in an infinite reality where God's faith, faith in God's Son, is going to transcend time. Praise God. This is who we are. And ladies and gentlemen, when, when it, where human power is limited, God's power, forever power, is infinite. I'm going to suggest to you tonight that we need this power in our life. And a confession of His is the power might exactly be what you need tonight. You may have come in here tonight saying, you know what, I'm at the very end of my existence. You might think I'm at the end of my rope. You might think that I don't know if I can go another day. I don't know if you have felt it, but I have felt it this year. I felt it last year, the oppression of the enemy who has come against the church in these, come, these last couple of years. It's been, it's been wearisome. The enemy is coming after the church with all that he has. And he's coming after the way of life that we have known here with all that he has. And sometimes you think, I don't know if it's ever going to stop. You know, the thing is, we don't know if that part will stop, but what we do know is that the power of God can overcome anything the enemy throws at us. And sometimes we're, take, we're taking too much attention to seeing what the enemy is doing and not putting our attention on the God who will cause us to overcome. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the book of Daniel, they were thrown into the fiery furnace, and they could have looked around and just noticed the furnace, but instead of no, noticing the fire... They noticed the one who was in the fire with them. I want you to know today, ladies and gentlemen, believers in Jesus Christ, those of you who have trusted Jesus and you have made Jesus the Lord of your life and you submit to him and you let his kingdom rule over you, I want you to know that you'll never be alone. There won't be one thing that you'll deal with that Jesus won't be there. He is there. All you've got to do is look up and find him. He's there. We need some forever power in our life. We need something that's real, amen. We're living in a world right now that changes so fast, we don't even know what the rules are anymore, but we know there's a God on high that knows it all, amen, and there's not anything that he cannot do. Let me suggest to you, point number one, that forever power is the answer for discouragement. Discouragement, the word discouragement means to rob you of your courage or your strength. You know, when you get down, you just feel like, I just can't do it anymore. I can't go another day. I get weary. I get tired. I get sick of it. Anybody ever said this? I'm just over it. You ever said that? Or how about this? This is a good one. I'm just done. I'm just done. What do you mean done? Somebody cooking you? What's wrong with this? <laughs> Something wrong with this picture. You know what I mean? I mean, what do you think? You, are you just going to check out? How are you going to check out? You know what? Even if you check out, you're still going to face God. Amen. So what in the world? I mean, we can walk around and be discouraged. And ladies and gentlemen, all of us get discouraged sometimes. But when I'm discouraged, you know what I need? I need something bigger than me to lift me up. Amen? I need forever power when this comes into my life. And if I keep going to the same sources that bring discouragement to me, no wonder. And I can do it. Anybody want to confess that you can do it too? Anybody out there got, got some sourness in you sometimes? A little root of bitterness comes up once in a while? You, you, you angry, you know, once in a while, Ryan's doing about halfway. Y'all pray for Ryan that he get those hands up in the air. Like he said, well, go get them hands up in the air like you don't care. Amen? Isn't that what you said? That's exactly what you said. We got it on the tape. Amen? If it's not on there, we're going to put it on there. So lift them hands up and, and, and admit it, you know, because sometimes we just don't know if we can do it anymore. We need something bigger uh, than, our, than ourselves. Point number two. Forever power is the answer for dependency. You've got some dependencies that aren't healthy, and most people do. Most people do. Most people have got things in their life that they're dependent on that couldn't save them no matter what. And we're trusting in things that absolutely cannot save. If you think a government can save you, you've got the wrong dependency. If you think the pills can save you, you've got the wrong stuff. If you think the bottle can save you, you got the wrong stuff. If you think those things you do behind the scenes on the internet can save you, you got the wrong thing. You're connected to something that has absolutely no power to save, but it has the power to condemn you and keep you down. 
And you know the thing about dependencies and the reason we have 3D life recovery here in our church is because of this. People who are hooked cannot get help on their own. You need power greater than yourself, and you need forever power. And that forever power has been given to the Word of God, been given to the church, and that's what we're here to do tonight. I want you to know tonight that you haven't been so bad, you haven't done it so bad, you haven't messed up so wrong that God cannot save your life. If you don't believe that can happen, just talk to some of the people sitting around you because they'll tell you at one time they were a complete mess. But Jesus takes a mess and sent the Messiah and turns that into a message of hope to others. Amen. And I want to testify to you tonight. They're all over this church. And if you want to hear them talk about it, show up tomorrow night at 3D Life Recovery. Sometimes people say, well, I don't know. I'm kind of tired. I don't think I can go. You're saying you're discouraged so you won't go. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're discouraged, that's all the more reason why you should. You tell me what's going to be better than being at 3D Life Recovery. Sitting at home watching Spongebob. I want to tell you, Spongebob can... <laughs> I got people telling off, yeah, look over here. I want to tell you, Spongebob was hatched in hell. <laughs> now, don't walk out and say he said you're going to hell if you watch Spongebob. That's not what I said. But if you want a recipe to get people uh, uh, where they cannot focus and function... <laughs> ADHD on overload. I mean, this guy's adrenaline overload. You know, I mean, about 30 seconds is all I can take of it. I have kicked holes in more televisions, you know, because I've got lots of grandkids. Yeah, don't go out and say, well, he said we're going to hell. I'm just telling you my opinion, amen. There you go. The answer to the SpongeBob addiction is forever a power. Some of you won't remember everything else I said, but you'll remember that. Forever power is the answer for discouragement, the answer for dependency, is the answer for disease. Everybody in the world's trusting things that they can't trust. Somebody's like, well, we're going to eventually cure this big disease that we've got. I'm going to tell you this right now. I don't think we will. And I certainly don't think, look, Whatever, I could be right, I could be wrong, but I certainly don't think we're going to cure it the way we're trying to. You know, if we did, everybody would be like, man, look what mankind did. Next week is thine is the glory. I don't think God's going to share his glory for, with anybody. But what if we don't get rid of it? What if people die? You might want to be ready to meet God. You're going to die sometime. Have you noticed that? There's a 100% chance you're going to die. So you need some forever power. Amen? And I want to tell you something. When forever power does something, it does it and does it well. It wasn't long ago, a month, a few days ago, my dad was at the end. Medical science said we can only, you know, keep him going for a little while, but his body's going to have to kick back in or he's not going to make it. Medical science told me and my sisters go in there and say your goodbyes, and we did. My dad is at my sister's house. He's out of the hospital right now. You know why? Because God has a final say. Forever power is the cure, is the answer for disease. Forever power is the answer for death. For death. What if he had died? I can tell you if he had died, though he were dead, yet shall he live. You know what he told us? He said, my heart's all is, is with me, Ma. That's what he called my mother. And she went on to be with the Lord last winter. And I would tell you what would be happening right now. There'd be two people in, that were in their 80s and very frail and sick that would not be anymore. Amen. I want to tell you something. The older you get, the more you realize death is not the worst thing in the world. Sometimes it's a good thing. It's a translation. It's a graduation. I'm, ex I'm exchanging this one that doesn't work for one that will. Amen? We need some forever power. Let me give you an illustration about this, and I'm done tonight. Forever power is displayed in the life of Jesus. It's displayed. You want to know where, where to find that? Look at the life of Jesus, and I'm going to give you a story. I'm going to give you something from the book of Mark chapter 5. From Mark chapter 5, I want to read some scriptures together. 
This is Jesus. The Bible said Jesus was coming upon a man um, who had some severe, severe problems. This is the story of what's called the Gadaran demoniac, a man from the region of Gadara who was possessed by the devil, and he was living a very difficult life. I'll give you a few thoughts about him. The scriptures are in your notes, and I'm going to have them on the board. I'm going to refer to them as well. Let's go ahead and start with Mark chapter 5, because Jesus gets off a boat, and here's this man who has lived here, and he's been possessed by the enemy, by the devil, and his life was completely out of control. And the Bible says in verse number three he this man had his dwelling among the tombs and no one was able to bind him anymore not even with a chain verse four because he had often been bound with shackles and chains and the chains had been torn apart by him and the shackles broken in pieces and no one was strong enough to subdue him this is a bad situation he was so bad that nobody on the planet could deal with him you think your problem's bad here's one and the reason why I want to use this illustration is to show you your situation isn't so bad that Jesus can't deal with it because this guy is going to run straight into forever power. Verse number 5, constantly night and day he was screaming among the tombs and in the mountains and gashing himself with stones. What a sad story. This man lived among the dead. He lived in tombs. You might say, well, I'm not that bad. I'm not living that way. Listen, if you're living under the power of some chemical, you are living among the dead because that chemical is slowly but surely taking your life. This man couldn't get out. He was bound by a stronger than human power. You see, here in our world, we think we're going to beat things in our own power. But this is an illustration of a man who could not. And anybody who ever gets better admits that they cannot do this on their own. This man was handcuffed. One of the Greek words used, they said that they, they put the cuffs on his hands. That couldn't hold him. The humans could not help him. The humanistic therapy could not help. People tried to help this man. And whenever somebody would, would show up, this man, driven by the enemy, by the devil, would overpower them. The strongest human on the planet was powerless to help this man. The man was destitute and hopeless. Not only did he live among the dead, but he lived with despair. I want you to notice that it said, that every night he was screaming and crying. You know what he was dealing with? He was dealing with emotional pain. Sometimes people say, well, emotional pain is not as bad as physical pain. Ladies and gentlemen, I think it might be worse. Because when you have a person that has lost all hope in life, and you have a person that is bound by something stronger than they are, and they can't stop what they're doing, and they can't find any solution, and they can't find any peace, and they can't get anything to work in their life, then emotional pain becomes a part of their life. And this man was experiencing what we would call night terrors. He was screaming in the middle of the night. You see, sometimes Satan says, come follow me. It's going to be a great time. It's just like that first time when you used that substance and it looked so good and made you feel so good. And you thought, man, I have found heaven. But you found out pretty soon that there were some shackles on your hands and shackles around your heart. And eventually, instead of finding heaven, you found yourself living in hell. And this man was there. And there was no help for this man. And humans could not help him. He was destitute. He was in despair. He was screaming and crying. And the Bible says he was constantly cutting himself with stones. Isn't it interesting that in our culture now that people do that? And it took me a long time to figure out what was going on. But it's a very real phenomenon when the emotional pain is so great. You have to work it out somehow. You have to self-harm to try to get some of that pain from the inside out. But ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't work. You see, nothing that humans can do can solve this. And ladies and gentlemen, 3D Life Recovery and, and the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ says this. You cannot overcome your weakness on your own. The strongest human couldn't help him. His willpower couldn't help him. He had no hope in his life, and he gave up and just joined the realm of the dead. What a sad story. 
He was bound by a power that was greater than he could find. He was bound beyond human help, and he was banished to live the lifestyle of the dead. No one could bind him. No one could help him. No one could tame him. And if you stop right there, it's a sad story. And you know what? All of us can do that. Why do we work seven days a week at Eastland? We have Life Academy all week. We have services all weekend. We have services most nights. Why are we that busy? Because people are that desperate. This man found help when he saw Jesus. And our job is to take Jesus to people that need him. Sad to say, in some places, Christian people, maybe they're Christian, maybe not, they tend to look at those like that and say, well, just keep them out of my backyard. I want you to know that Jesus didn't reject that man, and neither will we. When Jesus shows up, things change. Next scriptures, if you don't care. Seeing Jesus from a distance, he ran up and bowed down before him. And shouting with a loud voice, he said, What business do we have with each other, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I implore you by God, do not torment me. For he had been saying to him, Come out of the man, you unclean spirit. Now, this is amazing to me. Jesus saw the man before the man saw Jesus, and the man immediately recognized who Jesus was. But it wasn't him. It was what was controlling him. When Jesus says for something to come out, it comes out. Maybe we need some forever power tonight to speak into somebody's soul and say, addiction, come out. He ran to Jesus, but he's afraid. This is a lot of people. A lot of people have this problem. They still look at Jesus the wrong way. Trudy said, it's not me. I just had to go there. People are afraid of God. I mean, some people are afraid to come to church. You know that? You know, some people, if they're living this way, they don't want to come to church. Well, I don't know, you know, all of the reasons, but it looks like some of them are, I'm afraid. I'm afraid to get real with God. I'm afraid to just let what's inside be shown. I can tell you, I've been doing this a long time. A lot of people come in and they walk into the church and they sit down somewhere and everything wrong in their life gets neatly packaged and covered up. And for the most part, what you do, and I'm saying you, it may not be anyone in this room, but what many people do is just try to endure it. If somebody like me would say, if you want to get rid of this, come see Jesus. Let's pray for you right now and let's get rid of that. And if I said, you need to come up here and let us pray for you, some folks would rather go home in the same condition they came in than humble themselves and do that. Because you're afraid. What are you afraid of? This guy here, the, the demons, they know that Jesus had the power to throw them into the abyss. They knew that. And so right off the bat, they start saying, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. And they begin to try to manipulate the situation. We don't want to go to hell. When Jesus shows up, things change. The stronger than human power came before Jesus, and the stronger than human power experiences real fear because fear belongs to the enemy, not to the people of God. And ladies and gentlemen, that stronger than human power that he could not deal with, he could not get out of, that power begins to beg for mercy at the hand of Jesus. You know why? Because he knows he's nothing in the face of Jesus. 
And if that demon submits to Jesus, I want you to know that situation you're dealing with will as well. And that dysfunction in your life, that fear in your life, that, that addiction in your life that you just can't beat in the face of Jesus Christ will cower. And when Jesus says, get out, it will go. And this demon possessed man, possessed by many demons. Jesus says, what's your name? And he says, legion, because there are many of us. And so, long story short, Jesus simply says to those demons to leave the man. And when the stronger than human power hears what Jesus says, they must obey. And they left. And when Jesus confronts this man, confronts these demons, they are powerless before him. And the end result is this. This forever power will draw you to Jesus. This forever power will put you in your right mind. This forever power will give you a new start. Look at the story as it goes on. First number, they came to Jesus and observed the man who had been demon-possessed sitting down. Wait a minute, he's not running wild. They came to Jesus, they saw him clothed and in his right mind. That's not how he was. They came to Jesus, said the very man who had been the legion was sitting down, sitting in front of Jesus, sitting at his feet. How did that happen? It happened because the forever power is way more powerful than the stronger than human power that even you're dealing with tonight. And Jesus Power will draw you to him. He will put your mind back. I'm telling you, if you run with the devil, your brain will begin to be confused. You'll live in darkness. Eventually, you'll live in a death culture. There are people that are living. They're like dead while they're living. And I want you to know that if you want a new start, there is power for you to have a new start. It's not that God will do this for me or God will do this for someone else. God will do this for you, but you got to confess it. You have to come to him. When he calls you, you come. You submit to what he says. When his power comes in, you do what he tells you to do. You simply cannot beat this in your own power, and you cannot beat this doing it your way. If you're still saying, I want Jesus as Lord, but I want to run my life, you will continual, continually live in that destructive lifestyle. This is good news tonight. That no matter what it is that you're dealing with, if he can deal with disease, if he can deal with destruction, if he can deal with the demoniac, if he can deal with the death, he can deal with anything we're dealing with tonight. And if you go home in the same way that you came here, it's on you. Because in the name of Jesus, he is here tonight. Two or more gathered in my name, there am I in the midst. He is here. Where the word of God is preached, he is here. Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the power. And it is forever. And you can experience that tonight. I got to thinking why some people never change. Let me offer a few things that I thought of. First, I think some people never change because they prefer a power other than Jesus. I think some people never change because they will reject the relational nature of the Savior they don't want a relationship with God. They just want more magic. I think some people never change because of pride. You know the truth, don't you? Until you admit you've got the problem, you're never going to get over it. Am I right? Some people never change because they prefer their sin. I'd rather have my sin. Some people never change because they refuse to believe. They just can't believe it. Some people have this idea, there's no hope for me. Satan says, this is who you are, this is who you're always going to be, and it's never going to be different, it's never going to change, and this is just who you are, get used to it. So we say, okay, Satan, I'll just believe it. All the while, when we believe that lie, we blame God. God, why would you make me like this? God's like, I, I didn't do that. Satan did that. Satan wants to destroy you. Satan wants to inflict major damage on your life and get you to blame God for it. 
It's time his lies come down. Amen? Sometimes people will never change because they, are, they live in total deception. They just don't know any different. Sometimes it's demonic possession. And the last one I thought of was this. They've tried before and failed. I tried before and failed. Some people never come out of this lifestyle because they tried before and they failed. Oh, I failed. Oh, I failed. Oh, I failed. Listen, just come back to the Lord and trust him with your life. The gospel, the, the gospel is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of, of, of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who leaves. The word power is the same word, dunamis. So guess what? Same thing Jesus said in John chapter 5. When there's a pool of water and whenever the water is stirred, whoever was first in could be healed. And there was a guy there 38 years. And Jesus shows up and says, do you want to be well? well? Let me ask you. Do you want to be well? Forever power is here. You can be well. Forever power is available to you tonight. Where there is forever power. There is hope. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. And thine is the power. And thine is the glory forever. Tonight, you can be the recipient of God's power if you'll receive him tonight. The Bible says in John 1, 12, as many as received him, to them he gives the power to become sons of God. How about tonight we just take all of this stuff inside of us and we just get rid of it, amen? See Jesus, come to Jesus, and when he gets rid of it, it's gone.